Nearing the end of the series, this is a model steam engine test plant. Rubbing down and re-varnishing the baseboard and watching the varnish dry. Fitting a number 3 injector and getting ready to assemble the plant for a live steam test. With the new, improved gas burners. I was never happy with the finish on this baseboard. It's a very strange kind of wood, it's not mahogany. And now it has a special slot cut in it in order to access the burner fittings from below. And this also needs a coat of varnish to waterproof it. For the final rubbing down session, I'm using this detail sander that I bought a few weeks ago. It's very conveniently powered by a rechargeable battery, and this particular model is made by Bosch. I bought it with the small battery option, just to make it lighter, and it really is good. I haven't recharged the battery since I bought it. I find that sanding a varnish surface, I don't mean to get rid of the varnish, but to sort of clean up the finish of the varnish, is difficult because the sander will pick up the varnish and then it stops cleaning up the surface and makes a mess of it. Generally speaking, I use wet to dry sandpaper and I always use it wet and get a good finish. But in the case of this sander, I'm going to try something different. I've removed the sandpaper and now I'm going to try this. It's top tip time. The surface underneath the sander where the sandpaper goes, also sticks very well to a piece of Scotch-Brite, and this was much better. If you don't believe me, try it yourself. It made a much better job of cleaning up the top surface of the varnish. Because the Scotch-Brite is flexible, the sander makes a different noise, but I don't think this is detrimental to it, and even if it is, if it breaks, I will have to bite the bullet and buy a new one. It's certainly making a much better job of flattening the surface of the existing varnish. As you'll see very shortly when I remove all the dust using some white spirit. I put a copious amount of white spirit on this cloth and just rubbed over the surface. The surface finish, although it's not very shiny, is much better. Time to paint the inside edge of the slot. It's very important with a steam plant baseboard to make sure that it is fully waterproof. And here, using a very small paintbrush, I'm thoroughly painting the inner part of the slot in the baseboard. This should waterproof it perfectly. While I was painting the slot, I also applied some to the holes. That's because I'd used some countersunk wood screws to hold the piece of mahogany underneath, because my original plan was to clamp it in the milling machine. Once I'd finished painting the slot, I poured a limited amount of the polyurethane varnish onto the board. And then, using my cloth, still very wet with white spirit, I spread out the varnish all over the surface of the baseboard. I haven't showed it in the video, but I did add some more white spirit to the cloth, which gave me a much better finish. This is Ron Seal Hard Glaze Varnish, and it's the oil-based polyurethane type. You may be thinking, why don't I thin the varnish to start with? Well, I have tried doing that, but I do find that then it goes off in the tin and hardens all by itself. And now a special treat for all those viewers who like painting shots. This is the varnish drying in the workshop, and I will have to wait until it dries before I can fit all the components to it. However, some things from the steam plant need work, I'm going to change this number 4 injector for a number 3. I also bought a number 2 injector as well as a number 3. I've put together this boiler plant for conveniently testing steam engines using steam on the bench. So I'm not really bothered if the number 3 puts too much water in. I'll just wait until the pressure goes back up. In this clip I'm applying some Loctite 542 to the end of the water valve to make sure that there cannot be any leaks whatsoever between the hexagon part and the main body of the valve. Injectors do not work if they can suck air instead of water. So all of the connections need to be steam tight, air tight and water tight. This is moderately interesting, it's a number 4 Jubilee fittings injector. And it has a number 4 stamped over the top of the number 3. I guess they must have run out of caps when they were making a batch of them. The number 4 injector did actually work, but it was putting far too much water into the boiler, which dropped the pressure far too quickly, and the temperature of the steam was a bit too low, which did make it a bit erratic. Here, as you can see, I'm going to use a number 3 injector. 
This size of injector should be better. It will put quite a lot of water in at one go, but it shouldn't be quite as touchy as the number four. Usually when I make videos about injectors, I always warn that the cones in the end of them are loose and you must always put back both of the union nuts on the end to stop the cones from falling out. Here's a number four injector ready to go back in the box of injectors, complete with pipe unions and union nuts at each end. And here's the number two injector, which is now missing a cone. I lost both of them, and I found one on the floor, but I can't find the second one. Although when I was editing the video, it did give me a clue that I may have put the injector cone into the box of union cones by accident. Honestly, it's not old age, it's just the drugs I've been taking for the cancer treatment. Even though I stopped taking these drugs, one month later, the effects of them are still very much present in my system. Back to the job, I poured some cellulose thinners into a small tub to remove the black paint from the valve. I don't want the valve to be black, I want it to be brassy coloured. This is the adapter that I made to connect the water valve to the injector. After a coating of Loctite 542, I fitted it all together and then screwed it into the tank. The combination of the brass and the black tank is really good. I need to fit an extension onto the overflow and for some reason the overflow on this number 2 injector was a bit long so I shortened it, fitted it to the injector and connected a piece of silicone rubber tubing. This makes sure that all of the water from the injector's overflow goes into the bottom tank and not all over the baseboard. After a couple of days when the varnish has dried I will assemble the plant, redo some of the piping and give it a test but this time I will be timing the test with my stopwatch to see how long it takes to raise steam. With the existing burners which had very small primary air holes and damaged ceramic, it took over one hour to raise steam. I really am hoping it's going to be better than that this time, otherwise it will become a really attractive doorstop. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.